Good morning, friends. Greetings and welcome to The Bright Side, your nutritional program dedicated to the understanding of the vast world of nutritional supplementation. I'm your host, pharmacist Ben, nutritional pharmacist from Boulder, Colorado. I specialize in using nutritional supplements where other healthcare practitioners use toxic pharmaceutical drugs and deadly medical procedures. If you suspect that there are natural nutritional roads to your vitality and health and well-being and to addressing your health challenges, whatever they may be, but you don't know where to begin, you have come to the right place. As you listen to The Bright Side every day, you are more and more in control of your body. You are more and more knowledgeable, and you know you can overcome any health issue. That's why we are here every day on The Bright Side, helping clear up the sometimes confusing world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation over the last 29 years of practicing pharmacy. I've seen drug-free recoveries from diabetes and hypertension and obesity and skin diseases like psoriasis, eczema, rosacea, acne, digestive ailments, autoimmune issues of all kinds. Recoveries that by the standards of modern medicine can only be called a miracle, but what is in the world of the body, what is in the world of biology, standard operating procedure. Because the human biological system is a healing system, it's a regenerating system, it is a renewing system designed divinely to heal and renew itself on a moment-to-moment -moment basis. And while some folks may call that healing, renewing, regenerating system a miracle, it just is the way the body works. If you have questions about health or nutrition or prescription drugs, we welcome your phone calls on the bright side, 844-236-6010 is our number. Try to call in early so we can get to as many calls as possible, 844-236-6010. If you have questions about the longevity products, formulations, skin care, skin care ingredients, prescription drugs, if you want to get off your meds, or help a loved one get off their meds and get on a good nutritional supplement program. We'd love to hear from you. Also, of course, if you have a success story, we love hearing success stories. Or if you simply want to contribute to the conversation, 844-236-6010 is our number today and every day on the bright side, 844-236-6010. If you want to purchase any of the Longevity products you hear advertised on the program, recommended on the program, you can head over to my website, brightsideben.com, and purchase products right off the website. You can also click on the Join the Team link. And join me in my mission to educate the world about how important a good nutritional supplement program can be. You can also order products off my blog, pharmacistben.com and criticalhealthnews.com. And you can call the Brightside Ben phone team if you'd like to talk to somebody personally. They're at 866-735-2470, 866-735-2470. Okay, we're talking skin health. We've been talking for a while. We'll wind it down here probably next week talking about uh, acne, rosacea, dry skin, all in honor of my new Truth Treatment products, truthtreatments.com, truthtreatments.com. The most important take-home message here, being skin problems are health problems, and conversely, if you take care of the health of your skin, you'll be addressing the health of the body. Of course, with the skin, we have an option of approaching it topically in a way that we can't with the internal systems and structures and organs, and using topical vitamin C, in its fatty form, as well as zinc, as well as vitamin A, perhaps selenium, vitamin E, magnesium, all of these can be helpful. Essential fatty acids can be helpful, topical that is. But only this is only the tip of the iceberg. Topical strategies for dealing with dry skin, acne, rosacea, etc., are only the tip of the skin health iceberg. So while it's true that you can topically apply essential fatty acids and vitamin C and vitamin A and cholesterol and, and selenium and zinc, etc., to your skin, and it can all be helpful for skin issues, the vast majority of effective skin health strategies are going to be internal. For one thing, first thing, if we want to have beautiful skin, we got to be addressing the digestive tube. I'm going to call it the digestive tube to highlight the fact that it is like a tube. It's a tract. It's like a hose. And once we picture this, we can picture that it has a lining on the inside, and that lining is what breaks down when we have skin health problems. The lining of the digest, or when we have internal health problems, including skin health problems, or when we have digestive problems. That lining breaks down, they call it leaky gut syndrome, because once that lining breaks down, stuff gets into the blood, and that's really where we're off to the disease races, whether we're talking skin diseases, or whether we're talking internal diseases, or whether we're talking just dry skin. Oftentimes, dry skin is connected to breakdowns in the surface of this digestive tube, leaky gut syndrome, intestinal malabsorption syndrome. 
First of all, we got to eliminate the cause of the breakdown, and that always means look for food allergies, food intolerances, foods that you have problems with, do a food diary, correct digestive issues. Same thing we always talk about. This is the first step to take to restore ourselves back to health or to maintain our health if we're already healthy. Focus on digestive wellness. And because meta, uh, prescription drugs, medication, represent toxicity, that means weaning yourself off of prescription drugs. I'm not going to sit here and tell you to stop taking your prescription drugs if you're working with a physician and he's dispensed or recommended or prescribed medication for you. It's not really fair to just stop taking your prescription drugs if you're dealing with a doctor. You have a de facto agreement, almost like a contract, with a doctor. If you're going to go see the doctor and he prescribes something, it's not fair to not take the prescription drug and then still go see the doctor. He's trying to work with you. I don't believe, I don't believe in, I'm not a big, you know, if you listen to this program, you know I'm not a big believer in doctors or medication, but if we agree and if we decide that we're gonna go see a physician, we're gonna take medication, or we're gonna do, uh, we're gonna get some advice from a physician, it's not fair for us to do it halfway. It's not fair to the doctor. It's not fair to the physician who's trying to work with us. However, if you decide that you don't wanna go the medical route, Weaning yourself off your prescription drugs is a key step to, weaning yourself off of prescription drugs is a key step to take to restore yourself back to health. How does that, it sounds kind of weird when I say that, right? Getting yourself off of prescription drugs is a major step to restoring yourself back to health. What does that tell you? It tells you the prescription drugs are destroying your health. Again, I'm not telling anybody to stop taking their medication if they're in the, uh, being taken care of by a doctor. But just understand that a prescription drug is being handled by your liver. Your prescription drug requires B vitamins for detoxification. It requires glutathione, the body's main detoxifier for detoxification. It, it requires vitamin C and vitamin E and other nutrients for detoxification. So if you're on a prescription drug, your body has less nutrients available to it to heal, to get healthy. Prescription drugs are thus anti-health. Weaning yourself off, off a prescription drug is very important if you really truly want to restore yourself back to health again doing it with your doctor's uh, participation all degenerative disease hypertension especially cardiovascular issues contain an element of low blood oxygen and that includes skin health issues there's something called ductal hypoxia that's related to skin health problems ductal meaning low blood uh, low oxygen inside pores and inside follicles and inside uh, sebaceous glands these are all related to acne and dry skin and and uh, uh, problems with eczema and psoriasis so hypoxia or low blood oxygen needs to be addressed number one focus on the digestive system number two regular slow deep breathing and then all food all food is going to induce an inflammatory defensive response even good food caloric restriction is one of your best friends if you're dealing with any kind of inflammation now I'm talking microscopic inflammation when we hear the word inflammation we think of a broken leg or a swollen ankle or a black eye but there's micro inflammation that occurs at the microscopic level that's the equivalent of a black eye or a swollen ankle Caloric restriction is one of the best ways that you can reduce this micro-inflammation and fasting as well. And of course, because vitamins and minerals, essential fatty acids, protein, these are the raw materials required for the chemistry of restoration, how the body's repairing and restoring itself, deficiencies have to be addressed. That means getting yourself on a good nutritional supplement program, getting yourself on the healthy start pack, using protein supplements. If you're not a vegetarian, whey protein is the best protein going. If you don't have any dairy allergies, or if you are a vegetarian or you have dairy allergies, use sprouted rice protein, hemp seed protein, pea protein. All vegetables are going to have a certain amount of protein, especially cruciferous vegetables. Yesterday we talked about dry skin. The moisturizer business is a billion dollar business. Nobody who's selling you a moisturizing cream is going to reveal to you the truth about their products, that moisturizers do nothing of the kind. They don't moisturize. In fact, they're anti-moisture. Moisturizers suppress your skin's production of its natural moisturizers. Yes, the skin makes natural moisturizers, something called the natural moisture factor. You, you put your moisturizer cream on, that suppresses the production of your skin's inherent moisturizers, guaranteeing, guaranteeing that you're gonna be using your moisturizer, spending money on moisturizers the rest of your life. You think any moisturizer company's gonna tell you that? No. All right, I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to The Bright Side, 844-236-6010 is our number. We'll take a break and come back with more good health information right after this. Don't go away. All 
All right, we're back on the bright side. I am Pharmacist Ben. We're on the air Monday through Friday, 8 to 9 Pacific, 10 to 11 Central, and 24-7 on our archive page, brightsideben.com. You can purchase any of the Longevity products or join the Brightside Ben team from brightsideben.com or criticalhealthnews.com or pharmacistben.com, or you can call the Brightside Ben phone team at 866-735-2470, 866-735-2470. All right, so continuing on here about skin, dry skin. If you got dry skin, a moisturizer is just going to suppress your own natural moisture factors. No moisturizer company is going to tell you that. You rub a moisturizer cream on, you rub oil and wax and, and fake oil and preservative and fragrance and emulsifiers. Who the heck thought of that? Who came up with that idea? To rub a cream or lotion on your skin and then expect our dry skin to go away. It doesn't. All we end up with is a layer of wax and silicon and oil and fake oil on top of our skin. Somehow we believe that's moisturization. Moisturization occurs when the cells underneath the surface of the skin trap water. This is done naturally by natural moisture factors in the skin and you can upregulate those by using, surprise, surprise, internal nutritional strategies. If you want to truly hydrate your skin, if you have dry skin, and nobody should ever have dry skin, personally, I've never used a moisturizer in my life, and I've never had dry skin. What I do do is a lot of essential fatty acids and a lot of fatty vitamins, and I make sure I take care of my digestive health. If you want to leverage nutrition and leverage supplementation to truly hydrate your skin, so you never have to buy a moisturizer ever again, so you don't have to put preservatives on your skin, you don't have to put antimicrobials and artificial chemicals and fragrances and waxes and fake oils and silicon and rancid vegetable oil and solvents. That's what your typical moisturizing lotion is. You never want to put that stuff on your skin ever again. Focus on nutrition, nutritional supplementation, dietary strategies, and digestive health. In terms of maintaining soft and beautiful, hydrated young skin, vitamin A is your major secretion-inducing vitamin, secretory vitamin. Whether we're talking secretion of tears or digestive juices or skin moisture factors, vitamin A is the key player in secretions and in skin moisturization. To treat dry skin with vitamin A means that you also have to address absorption. Topical vitamin A can be really helpful here because you can bypass absorption problems. If you had a gallbladder taken out, if you've had a hysterectomy, if you have IBS, intestinal uh, irritable bowel syndrome, or ulcerative colitis, or any intestinal problems, all of these will compromise how well you absorb vitamin A. That's why you use vitamin A topically. You'll bypass your absorption issues by putting, putting retinol right on your skin. In the short run, retinol may cause some skin dryness because it's disturbing the surface. It disrupts the stratum corneum, the skin, uh, skin surface barrier. But in the long run, retinol upregulates. That is, it increases skin moisturization. Skin moisture factors are upregulated by retinol. So in the short run, you'll get some dryness if you use retinol. In the long run, you'll be increasing your skin moisture factors. Head over to truthtreatments.com if you want to check out a very powerful retinol product, 5% retinol, no preservatives, no fragrances, just retinol and vitamin C, and some transdermal penetration enhancers. Truthtreatments.com. So in the short run, you'll get some skin peeling, which is not necessarily a bad thing. But in the long run, you're going to get more moisturization. Reading from uh, the Journal of Cosmetic Dermatology, March of this year, researchers studying skin moisturization in older women concluded that retinol peel treatments can, quote, help to increase the amount of skin surface lipids in women during menopause, unquote. Lipids meaning fats. So vitamin A, super important, super relevant for helping reverse dry skin, for hydrating skin, moisturizing it truly, not fake moisturization like a lotion or a cream, but truly upregulating moisture factors. Vitamin C is also important, and vitamin C and vitamin A work together. Retinol works together with fatty vitamin C. In an article published in the journal Skin Pharmacology and Physiology earlier this year, it was shown, quote, Repeated topical application of a preparation containing both retinol and vitamin C is able to reverse, at least in part, skin changes induced by chronologic aging and photo aging. That means dark, unquote. That means dark spots, that means dry skin, that means wrinkles and fine lines. It's the combination 
of retinol and vitamin C. I've known this for years as a skincare professional. This article just came out earlier this year, but I've known this for years. That's why in my retinol product, Truth uh, Retinol Gel, Truth Retinol Gel, we put 25% fat soluble vitamin C. That's a ridiculously high amount of vitamin C. You're not going to find that in any products, let alone a retinol product. Retinol 5%, 25% fatty vitamin C, no preservatives, no fragrances, no oil, no emulsifiers, just two generous doses of retinol and vitamin C, the skin's two most important vitamins, two skin's two most important nutrients, the skin's two most important ingredients. In fact, between these two vitamins, vitamin A and vitamin C, you have what I call the dynamic duo of skin care ingredients. If you're stranded on a desert island and you can only bring two ingredients with you, those are the two. We spent a lot of time talking about retinol. I'm not going to rehash the stupendous, unbelievably important nature of retinol for the skin, except to say if you're over the age of 30 or 35 maybe, and you want to keep your skin pretty and young and healthy and attractive, you want to be using retinol on a regular basis at least once a week, maybe twice a week. Some folks are using my retinol 5% balm every day. Now, I don't necessarily recommend it every day, but if you can use it every day, that's great. In the case of vitamin C, recent research has shown that this unbelievably important nutrient, vitamin C, is that's the Babe Ruth of vitamins. I mean, that is the big kahuna of vitamins. Vitamin C has demonstrated uh, it's important for every single system in the body, but for the skin, it's been shown that the skin barrier is supported by application of topical vitamin C. That is, vitamin C used topically as well as internally encourages the development of skin cells. Skin cells are technically called keratinocytes, and vitamin C encourages their movement upwards to support the health and the integrity of the stratum corneum, the skin, uh, skin surface barrier. What's more, vitamin C plays a key role in supporting and encouraging the production of skin lipids, lipids meaning fats. Skin lipids, skin fats act to trap water. Topical vitamin C supports skin lipid production, skin barrier production. So, in other words, while Vaseline and other waxy, oily ingredients found in your typical cheapo and not-so-cheapo moisturizing lotions and creams will simulate, will imitate moisturization, imitate the skin barrier, vitamin C doesn't simulate, it stimulates. Why simulate when you can stimulate? Why imitate when you can have the real deal? Using topical vitamin C will turn on, will stimulate the production of skin barrier cells, that is keratinocytes, skin cells that will rise up to the barrier, and as well as skin lipids. So you'll upregulate your own production of skin lipids and you'll upregulate up the production of the skin barrier. This, is a, this highlights the major distinction between the medical model, which imitates things, imitates health, as opposed to nutrition, which activates health. Why would we settle with imitating health when we can activate health? When it comes to the skin, typical skin care provides a simulation of skin health. Nutrients like vitamin C and vitamin A, zinc, essential fatty acids, cholesterol stimulate skin health. And that includes the skin barrier as well as collagen and other substances that reside in the lower levels of the skin, including moisture factors. All right, I'm Pharmacist Ben, 844-236-6010 is our number. We're coming back with your phone calls and more good health information right after this on The Bright Side. Don't go away. All right, we're back on The Bright Side. I am Pharmacist Ben. We're on the air Monday through Friday, 8 to 9 Pacific. 10 to 11 Central and 24-7 on our archive page, brightsideben.com. You can purchase any of the longevity products or join the Brightside Ben team from brightsideben.com or criticalhealthnews.com or pharmacistben.com or you can call the Brightside Ben phone team at 866-735-2470, 866-735-2470. All right, so... Continuing on here about skin, dry skin. If you got dry skin, a moisturizer is just going to suppress your own natural moisture factors. No moisturizer company is going to tell you that. You rub a moisturizer cream on, you rub oil and wax and, and fake oil and preservative and fragrance and emulsifiers. Who the heck thought of that? Who came up with that idea? To rub a cream or lotion on your skin and then expect 
our dry skin to go away. It doesn't. All we end up with is a layer of wax and silicon and oil and fake oil on top of our skin. Somehow we believe that's moisturization. Moisturization occurs when the cells underneath the surface of the skin trap water. This is done naturally by natural moisture factors in the skin and you can upregulate those by using, surprise, surprise, internal nutritional strategies. If you want to truly hydrate your skin if you have dry skin and nobody should ever have dry skin personally I've never used a moisturizer in my life and I've never had dry skin what I do do is a lot of essential fatty acids and a lot of fatty vitamins and I make sure I take care of my digestive health if you want to leverage nutrition and leverage supplementation to truly hydrate your skin so you never have to buy a moisturizer ever again so you don't have to put preservatives on your skin. You don't have to put antimicrobials and artificial chemicals and fragrances and waxes and fake oils and silicon and rancid vegetable oil and solvents. That's what your typical moisturizing lotion is. You never want to put that stuff on your skin ever again. Focus on nutrition, nutritional supplementation, dietary strategies, and digestive health. In terms of maintaining soft and beautiful, hydrated young skin, vitamin A is your major secretion-inducing vitamin, secretory vitamin. Whether we're talking secretion of tears or digestive juices or skin moisture factors, vitamin A is the key player in secretions and in skin moisturization. To treat dry skin with vitamin A means that you also have to address absorption. Topical vitamin A can be really helpful here because you can bypass absorption problems. If you had a gallbladder taken out, if you've had a hysterectomy, if you have IBS, intestinal uh, irritable bowel syndrome, or ulcerative colitis, or any intestinal problems, all of these will compromise how well you absorb vitamin A. That's why you use vitamin A topically. You'll bypass your absorption issues by putting, putting retinol right on your skin. In the short run, retinol may cause some skin dryness because it's disturbing the surface. It disrupts the stratum corneum, the skin, uh, skin surface barrier. But in the long run, retinol upregulates. That is, it increases skin moisturization. Skin moisture factors are upregulated by retinol. So in the short run, you'll get some dryness if you use retinol. In the long run, you'll be increasing your skin moisture factors. Head over to truthtreatments.com if you want to check out a very powerful retinol product, 5% retinol, no preservatives, no fragrances, just retinol and vitamin C, and some transdermal penetration enhancers. Truthtreatments.com. So in the short run, you'll get some skin peeling, which is not necessarily a bad thing, but in the long run, you're going to get more moisturization. Reading from uh, the Journal of Cosmetic Dermatology, March of this year, researchers studying skin moisturization in older women concluded that retinol peel treatments can, quote, help to increase the amount of skin surface lipids in women during menopause, unquote. Lipids meaning fats. So vitamin A, super important, super relevant for helping reverse dry skin, for hydrating skin, moisturizing it truly, not fake moisturization like a lotion or a cream, but truly upregulating moisture factors. Vitamin C is also important, and vitamin C and vitamin A work together. Retinol works together with fatty vitamin C. In an article published in the journal Skin Pharmacology and Physiology earlier this year, it was shown, quote, Repeated topical application of a preparation containing both retinol and vitamin C is able to reverse, at least in part, skin changes induced by chronologic aging and photo aging. That means dark, unquote. That means dark spots, that means dry skin, that means wrinkles and fine lines. It's the combination of retinol and vitamin C. I've known this for years as a skincare professional. This article just came out earlier this year, but I've known this for years. That's why in my retinol product, Truth uh, Retinol Gel, Truth Retinol Gel, we put 25% fat-soluble vitamin C. That's a ridiculously high amount of vitamin C. You're not going to find that in any products, let alone a retinol product. Retinol 5%, 25% fatty vitamin C, no preservatives, no fragrances, no oil, no emulsifiers, just two generous doses of retinol and vitamin C, the skin's two most important vitamins, two skin's two most important nutrients, the skin's two most important ingredients. In fact, between these two vitamins, vitamin A and vitamin C, you have what I call the dynamic duo of skin care ingredients. If you're stranded on a desert island and you can only bring two ingredients with you, those are the two. We spent a lot of time talking about retinol. I'm not going to rehash the stupendous 
unbelievably important nature of retinol for the skin, except to say if you're over the age of 30 or 35 maybe, and you want to keep your skin pretty and young and healthy and attractive, you want to be using retinol on a regular basis at least once a week, maybe twice a week. Some folks are using my retinol 5% balm every day. Now, I don't necessarily recommend it every day, but if you can use it every day, that's great. In the case of vitamin C, recent research has shown that this unbelievably important nutrient, vitamin C, is that's the Babe Ruth of vitamins. I mean, that is the big kahuna of vitamins. Vitamin C is demonstrated. Uh, it's important for every single system in the body, but for the skin, it's been shown that the skin barrier is supported by application of topical vitamin C. That is, vitamin C used topically as well as internally encourages the development of skin cells. Skin cells are technically called keratinocytes, and vitamin C encourages their movement upwards to support the health and the integrity of the stratum corneum, the skin, uh, skin surface barrier. What's more, vitamin C plays a key role in supporting and encouraging the production of skin lipids, lipids meaning fats. Skin lipids, skin fats act to trap water. Topical vitamin C supports skin lipid production, skin barrier production. So, in other words, while Vaseline and other waxy, oily ingredients found in your typical cheapo and not-so-cheapo moisturizing lotions and creams will simulate, will imitate moisturization, imitate the skin barrier, vitamin C doesn't simulate, it stimulates. Why simulate when you can stimulate? Why imitate when you can have the real deal? Using topical vitamin C will turn on, will stimulate the production of skin barrier cells, that is keratinocytes, skin cells that will rise up to the barrier, and as well as skin lipids. So you'll upregulate your own production of skin lipids and you'll upregulate the production of the skin barrier. This, is a, this highlights the major distinction between the medical model, which imitates things, imitates health, as opposed to nutrition, which activates health. Why would we settle with imitating health when we could activate health? When it comes to the skin, typical skin care provides a simulation of skin health. Nutrients like vitamin C and vitamin A, zinc, essential fatty acids, cholesterol stimulate skin health, and that includes the skin barrier as well as collagen and other substances that reside in the lower levels of the skin, including moisture factors. All right, I'm Pharmacist Ben. 844-236-6010 is our number. We're coming back with your phone calls and more good health information right after this on the Bright Side. Don't go away. We are back on the bright side talking to Ron in Texas about his brother with kidney cysts. Uh, Ron, is your is your brother on any medicine? Uh, no. Okay, so he's in good health otherwise uh, that you know otherwise. about. That you know? Yeah, okay. Yeah. All right, so, so kidney cysts are they happen? They're not all that uncommon actually. Some fifty uh, percent of folks over the age of fifty or sixty are going to have. Uh, are likely to have kidney cysts. It's a sign that the blood is getting a little dirty and sugar is one of the major causes of dirty blood. Cysts are associated with insulin and they're associated with estrogen. Those are the two things you want to focus on, is insulin and estrogen. And I'll tell you how you deal with both of those in a second, but just so you know, insulin and estrogen both involve, <coughs> excuse me, problems with insulin and estrogen both involve blood toxicity and digestive health issues. So those are the two things you're going to want to focus on. First and foremost, look for problems with the digestive system, with digestive health. That means bowel movement issues, gas, bloating, etc. And then associate those with foods. Then eliminate the foods. The best way to do that is with a food diary. If you have cysts, if you have problems with cysts or gross or fibroids or uh, things growing out of control, usually it means something is amiss with the fatty system, the parts of the body that absorb fats and fatty vitamins, gallbladder, liver, uh, uh, intestines. So a couple things you're going to want to do, get yourself, uh, in addition to the food diary and, and uh, have him eliminating problem foods, have your brother start using a good probiotic supplement. I like the Biolumin Nightly Essence, three in the morning, three at night, also fermented foods, and also uh, vegetables, uh, vegetable juices, ground up uh, vegetable uh, celery and cucumber and pepper and uh, tomatoes, etc. Uh, in a juice where you keep the fiber and that will get him some nitrates and also some 
some fiber, and that'll also support digestive okay. health. You also want to use uh, one last thing here, and I'll let you I'll let you say what you want to say here in a sec. Uh, digestive enzymes, ultimate enzymes, will also help him process foods. Have him take his ultimate enzymes after meals with a little bit of apple cider vinegar. It wouldn't hurt him to throw in a little bit of lecithin granules after meals also. There's a couple more things, but what were you going to say, Ron? Uh, I was just going to say uh, of the the packs that uh, Dr. Wallach has or, or the digestive pack. pack. Yeah, which one should you? Healthy Start Pack. Healthy Brain or? No, this is how I would do it. I would do the Healthy Start Pack and then throw in the Biolumin Nightly Essence, the Ultimate Enzymes, and then I was going to tell you about the Fucoid Z, which can also have some important benefits for digestive health. And that's not in any packs. You got to put that together yourself. So it's the Healthy Start Pack, the Biolumin Nightly Essence, ultimate enzymes and then the fucoid z now you're also going to want him to go to the health food store and get a few extra nutrients vitamin a 20,000 iu a day vitamin e 400 iu a day the next thing you're going to want to do is have him start start to work with his blood sugar and you say he's not a diabetic but if he's 54 years old and he's got kidney cysts chances are he's dealing with some sort of a dysglycemia that means problems with how he handles sugar and there's a lot of things you could do for that first of all if he's got sugar cravings that's great bread cravings pasta cravings rice cravings that's great because that's an those are places where he can work to start to stabilize the blood sugar every time he craves bread or cereal or fruit juice or yeah. desserts yep, he does he okay does. those are all signs of dis that. Well, you don't want to force, you don't want to use willpower. It's a little bit difficult to do it. That way, go into more protein and coconut oil. Get him on some whey protein and have him lifting, doing a little bit of resistance training. For you guys who are interested in weaning yourself off of sugar by using more protein, it's important that you use, that your body uses that protein. Just eating protein or using a protein supplement isn't enough. Protein gets turned into fat. The body isn't going to, isn't going to turn that protein into muscle unless Unless it needs to and that's where resistance training comes in so in addition to upping his intake of whey protein and, and protein containing foods fish and meat etc eggs dairy if he's if he's inclined to eat those kinds of foods get him in either in the gym or or you can do resistance training at home with a rubber band you can buy a rubber band at one of those uh, 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 health equipment supply stores, a heavy-duty rubber band, and you can do your own resistance yeah. training. It's the combination okay. of resistance training and protein and also coconut oil, and then micronutrients that help him process sugar were also, are also important. And everybody out there listening, I'm not just talking kidney cysts. I'm talking cysts on the breast or cysts on the skin or fibroids, any kind of growths, uh, inappropriate cell growths. These are strategies that can benefit you. More protein, coconut oil, and then micronutrients. All of this is in the interest of helping stabilize blood sugar. Chromium and vanadium, that would be the sweeties. The B-complex, especially niacin, that would be the healthy start pack and the, and the beyond tangy tangerine if you're interested in getting more niacin. And by the way, niacin is a phenomenally, phenomenally important nutrient. Many people are deficient in it. Vitamin B3 is its other name, and it helps, you, it helps your body process sugar. It helps your body process fat. That's very important for digestive health, very important for brain health. People use niacin to treat schizophrenia. Dr. Abram Hoffer used it quite successfully to treat schizophrenia. It can be used for autism, uh, autism spectrum disorder, as they call it today, digestive health issues, skin issues, etc. Niacin is actually in a lot of topical skin products these days because of its benefits okay. for treating the skin and for acne. So what I was going to say is you might want to throw in 100 milligrams a day of timed release niacin for your brother uh, in addition to the Healthy Start Pack. And then last but most certainly not least for all cysts, all gross, all uh, uh, blood sugar issues, dysglycemia issues, 50 milligrams of zinc picolinate a day. You'll have to get that at the health food store. And you always want to balance your zinc out with copper. So if you're going to do 50 milligrams of zinc a day, it's probably not a bad idea to throw in 2 milligrams of copper glycinate or copper amino acid. That can help you as well. Okay? Did that help, Ron? Okay, what Yes, it does. What about the hyperbaric oxygen? That's great. Always great. Or you, you can do, if you don't want to deal with going out and finding an oxygen chamber, you can do practice slow, deep breathing, too. But, yeah, hyperbaric, hyperbaric, which means high pressure oxygen, where you go in a chamber and they just drive oxygen, or that you wear a mask and they drive oxygen into your, into your lungs, that's always great. That's just a gr great for just general health. Okay. All right, okay, make sure well, you're using so anti One last thing, Ron. When you use hyperbaric oxygen, make extra sure you're using vitamin E, selenium, and vitamin C, which are antioxidants and can protect you from some of the negative effects of oxygen. Okay? Okay, thank you so much. Uh, Take care, Ron. Have a beautiful day, man. God bless. Okay, uh, Eileen, West Virginia. Got a couple more minutes here. What's going on? Welcome to the Bright Side. Ask what? 
Hi, Eileen. Eileen? Hi. Oh, hello, Ben. Hey, what's up? Oh, I'm so glad I got you. Um, I just love your show. My hubby and I listen to you every day, and I just want oh, to be real, as I know time is short. Um, so I jotted down some notes. Sure. I'm in a lot. I'm in a lot of pain with my knee. I don't know if it's arthritis or what, but um. How old are you? How up, old are you approximately? I'll just read this real quick. I'm, I'm 72. I'm five okay. feet one. All right, so let's get you going on the knee. And knee pain is miserable. I've, I've had knee surgery several times. It's absolutely awful. Uh, so here's what you need to do for knee pain, as with all inflammatory joint pain. First thing, we've got to eliminate the entrance of inflammatory factors into the blood. That means digestive support. See if your knee pain... Uh, I think we lost Eileen there. Uh, I hope you're listening, Eileen. See if your knee pain uh, gets worse with foods. Notice when the knee pain flares up. This is true for all inflammatory pain, all inflammatory joint pain. You want to notice when your joint pain flares up. And that's very important. If you find that you're flaring up after certain foods, you're going to eliminate those foods. If you find that you're flaring up, I think we have Eileen back. You there, Eileen? Okay, hopefully yeah, Eileen's listening. My phone's listen. real cranky. Um, no worries, Eileen. Did you hear what I was saying? I was just addressing your question. No, only, no, I couldn't. Uh, okay. See if you can notice when your joint pain flares up. Those are, that's going to provide you with some uh, very important information. If you notice it flares up after certain foods or after meals, and this is very common, you want to link the flare-ups to specific foods. And if you have digestive issues, link foods to the digestive issues and then eliminate those foods. You know, this, we talk about this all the time. So that yeah. means a food diary, et cetera. A bone soup cartilage soup, if you will, where you take chicken bones and dissolve them, or ch a whole chicken and turn it into soup and dissolve the cartilage in the water. That can be very helpful for inflammatory pain. Cartilage is super, super helpful for the immune system, for the inflammatory system, for the digestive system. It's just for skin, amazing stuff. So make sure you're doing lots of bone soup, real chicken soup with the bones and the cartilage. A little apple yeah. cider vinegar or lemon or lime in the water will help dissolve the cartilage. You can also use the glucogel caps. That will do the same thing. If you want a couple of very important supplements, for joint pain. Uh, the Healthy Star Pack is going to be important because the ultimate EFAs, uh, essential fatty acids, are basically joint medicine. They're a lot medicine for a lot of things, but especially for the joints. Vitamin C works together with cartilage and with the glucogel caps. Make sure you're getting enough vitamin C. You can't make connective tissue and cartilage without vitamin C. Vitamin C is also wonderfully anti-inflammatory on its own. So make sure you're getting maybe 500, uh, 5,000 milligrams or so of vitamin C a day. Healthy Star Pack will get you 1,000 milligrams but you're going to want a little extra. 400 IU of vitamin A a day, wonderfully anti-inflammatory. And vitamin E and vitamin C work together, and they all work together, uh, vitamin C and E, with alpha lipoic acid and selenium. So 400 milligrams of alpha lipoic acid a day, maybe two to 300 milligrams, maybe more, 400 micrograms, I should say, of the ultimate selenium, too. So healthy star pack, focus on digestive health, glucogel caps, bone soup, vitamin C, vitamin E, alpha lipoic acid, selenium. Uh, magnesium, of course, is important, too. You'll get that in the Healthy Star Pack. All right, thanks for your call, Eileen. Appreciate it. And thanks for listening, friends. That's all the time we have for today. Tomorrow we'll continue talking skin health. We'll talk a little bit about my favorite mineral for the skin, too. Check out my website, truthtreatments.com, and my blog, pharmacistben.com. Love to have you on the Bright Side Ben team. That's all the time we have for today. Have a wonderful, beautiful day.